let's take a look at a couple of different scatter plots. Uh, the first one is going to have data that looks something like this. Basically, it's going to go up like this, right? And so you can see that there's a linear relationship that goes up like this, and it looks like the points would be very close to, on average, a line if we were to pass a line through roughly the center point of those, those data points. So because of that, we say that this guy has a strong linear relationship, and we say it has a positive slope. Why is it positive? Because any line that goes up and to the right is by definition from algebra positive slope, whereas the negative lines go down to the right like rolling down the hill. So see here we're splitting hairs a little bit. In the last section we were talking about linear relations, positive, negative. Now we're talking about if it's strong or not. So let's give an example of a weak linear relation. So what if we had a scatter plot that looked like this? What if we had data that more or less followed a line like this, but you just kind of tap a lot of dots here. Something like that. So you see, we can identify just from, you know, because you're humans and you're really good at, at looking at patterns, you can see that it is going up and to the right on average. But if you were to pass a line through all of these points, the data points would on average lie a farther distance away from the line. So we can see with our eyes that there are, there is a linear relationship between these variables, but it's not as strong as this one because the line, the, uh, the data points were packed tighter, close to whatever imaginary line is there. So what you what you say here is this one has a weak linear relationship. So what we say is that we have a weak linear relationship here, again, with a positive slope, just because it slopes up and to the right. All right. Now let's go down and do a couple of other uh, cases here. Let's say we have one. I'll kind of draw a little bit smaller because I want to fit something else on the page here. Let's take a look at this one right here. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Let's say we have one that looks like this. The, the lines are, it's more or less in a line or tightly compacted. The data points, something like this. What do you think this is? Well, this is a linear relationship. It's a pretty strong linear relationship because the, the dots are, are pretty tightly packed around whatever line that is down there. And we'll say it's strong linear, and we'll say it's a negative slope. All right, and uh, by extension, you can see you know exactly what it's going to be over here, so I'll just kind of hurry through that a little bit. If you have data points like this, they're spread farther apart, something like this. Right? But obviously, just eyeballing it, you can see that it slopes down and to the right, and it's weakly linear. So we'll say this is weak linear. and it's a negative slope. Now, uh, this is going to tie right into when we're talking about the correlation coefficient here in just a second, but before I get to the correlation coefficient, let me go ahead and just draw two more things. I said I was gonna put it on the same page, but I changed my mind. What if we had data that looks something like this? What do you think is gonna happen here? Let's say we have data like this. Okay, first of all, do you think that's a linear data set or not? Well, to me, this does not look like a line. I mean, obviously, it looks like there's some kind of boundary here. It doesn't, and you can't say if it's going up, down, left, right, or whatever. It's just kind of random ball, right? So what we call this, we say this is, there's no relationship. Or we say it's not linear. But typically, the better way to say it is there's no relationship at all between the variables because as we increase the independent variable, as we go to the right, you see we have all kinds of options for the data points that appear. Here, some are high, some are low. So what we're looking for when we march to the right along the independent variable is for the dependent variable to do something in lockstep with it. See, we go to the right, dependent variable comes down. Go to the right, dependent variable on average comes down. We go to the right here, dependent variable doesn't go down because some of these points are really high over here. So we, we can't say there's any kind of relationship that we can identify. And then our last case that we have, we're going to put it right over here, and this will be kind of fun. Let's say we have a smiley face, something like this. Let's say the data points look something like this. All right, what do you think we have there? Is this a linear relationship? Clearly not. There is no line that goes through these points. Uh, 
nonlinear data sets like this is a totally different subject for a different day. We're talking about correlation among data sets, among data points, and we're looking for linear relationships. This is not a linear relationship, so what you write down is nonlinear. It looks like there could be some relationship here potentially, right? But it's definitely not linear, so it's outside the scope of what we're talking about with the correlation coefficient. All right, so quick review. Um, we have lines that go up like this in a positive fashion. We call them positive slope. And we have strong linear when they're tightly packed and weak linear whenever they're farther apart. And then we have negative slope when they go down to the right. We have the strong relationships and also the weak relationships. So somehow we want to roll all of that stuff into the concept of a correlation coefficient. So before we go any farther, we're going to talk about the concept of correlation. Okay, in uh, just a, a few seconds, what it basically means, it means the variables are related. And I'm going to change to red here and write something extremely important down that I'm going to repeat about a thousand times throughout this course. Does not, does not mean um, that one variable causes the other. I mean, it could be the case that the age of the child dictates the height of the child. It could be, because that's an easier example, possibly, right? But there are other examples that I'm going to show you that you're going to be tempted to jump into the causation part of it, the cause, causation and cause. Those are two words that are related where you're going to be tempted to say that variable A causes variable B just because they have a linear relationship. But in fact, and we're going to get into this a lot later, it could be a third variable that you haven't even studied that's influencing both of the original variables. So you can't just say that A causes B without studying it a lot. So when we talk about correlation, we're not trying to say what causes the other thing. We don't care about that. We're not discussing that. We're not claiming that. It could be true, we're not claiming it. What we are claiming is that these variables are related somehow, either through direct relation from one causing the other or through another set of related variables. I could give you examples, but I don't want to derail us too far. We're going to get there at some point. Um, but they are related somehow, and we're looking for linear relationships. So what we want to do is boil all of the stuff that we've basically talked about in terms of these scatter plots into what we call a correlation coefficient. Now it can get a little confusing at first because there's actually two of them that you discuss in your book, but I'm going to try to break it down for you really simply. The first one you're going to uh, uh, read about is called the Pearson correlation coefficient. C-O-R-R-E-L. I always forget how to spell correlation. That's how you spell correlation. Coefficient. All right, the Pearson correlation, co co correlation coefficient. That's the big name for the thing. Now, this actually comes in two flavors, right? Remember, let me go back to the aside, give you a little aside over here, a little trip down memory lane. Remember when we talked about populations and samples, right? We have the thing called the population. We had the mean of that population, right? We called it mu. The Greek letter mu is the population of the, whatever the mean is of the population you're studying. Let's say we're studying all adult males in the entire United States. That's a really big number. The population mean would be the average value of whatever we're studying, the height, let's say, of all those people. Now, we can never, ever really know the mu. We can never really know the population mean because usually we're studying thousands and thousands or millions of people. We can't ever get that. So what we do is we sample, right? And so we might take 100 samples or 1,000 samples. And so instead of really talking about mu, we end up talking about x bar, right? That's the sample mean, right? So this guy up here, mu, the Greek letter, is called the population mean. And the, uh, you know, the xyz variable, whatever, is called the, um, the uh, uh, sample mean. That's what we basically talked about. And the same exact thing holds true uh, for variance and for sample variance, right? Because remember, we had the variance for the population. That is a lowercase sigma. That's a Greek letter. And that represents the population, the variance of the population. But we can't study the population really, so we usually sample a smaller number of it, and we, call it, we talk about S squared, right? Which is the variance of the sample that we have chosen. So the same sort of pattern is going to apply to this. The Pearson correlation coefficient for the population is going to be a Greek letter like this. It's called rho. It's kind of like a P. It looks like a P, but generally you kind of, I don't want to write again here, but you kind of hook it and kind of come down. It's called rho. And so 
uh, I'll put it like this, Rho. That's how you say it, Rho. Um, it's the same uh, letter that you use to talk about density when you're talking about chemistry and physics. You usually use Rho to talk about density. But anyway, this is a population variable. Right? So if we could study every child in every preschool in the entire world, let's say, that's the population, and we get everybody's age and everybody's height, and we make a giant chart with millions and millions, billions of people in that case, right? then we would actually know, we could calculate the correlation coefficient for the whole population because we'd have everybody. But we never have everybody. So in reality, in all of your problems, you're not going to really be dealing with rho at all. You're going to be dealing with the, the sample version of that, which is called uh, R. R is the uh, sample correlation coefficient. All right, so that's a lot of words to basically say that you have this thing called a correlation coefficient, and when you're talking about the entire population, you refer to it in its Greek form, rho, but really in all your problems, you're really going to be talking about r, because you're just talking about 10 samples or 50 samples or 100 samples or whatever, and that's what you're going to be using. And also, it's called the Pearson co correlation coefficient, but you normally drop the word Pearson. Uh, typically, you just talk about the correlation coefficient. You even drop the word sample, typically, because you're always talking about a sample of something. You just call it the correlation coefficient. So when someone's saying, hey, I got a, I got a correlation coefficient of, of you know, 0.5, then they're talking about lo lowercase r. That's what they're talking about. So let me move the page up just a little bit, up to here. And we're not going to actually calculate the correlation coefficient here, but I do want to tell you uh, what it means. r is a value, right? that is bigger than negative 1 and less than or equal to 1. This is how you write this mathematically. So you see, you see it in books like this, and sometimes this confuses people. You start in the inside and you read out. You start in the inside and you read out to the left and to the right. So what you're saying is r is greater than or equal to negative 1, greater than or equal to negative 1. And it's also, because you read this direction, less than or equal to positive one. So basically R is, another way to say it, is going to always have a value between negative one and positive one. And since you have the equal signs under the arrows, you can include negative one, positive one. So you can never have a correlation coefficient of two, ever, because it, it needs to always be in between positive and negative one, inclusive of positive and negative one. So um, you can have a correlation coefficient of negative 3, neg uh, I'm sorry, negative 0.3, negative 0.4, negative 0.9, positive 0.7, but neg never something like negative 6 or negative 10 or positive 12, something like this. So a good way to represent that or to kind of talk about what it basically means is to draw a picture. So let's draw a little picture. I'm probably beating this to death a little bit, but I want to make sure you understand it because it's probably one of the most central things in this entire lesson. So you can have a correlation coefficient that ranges between these three things. The thing in the center um, is going to be that r is equal to 0. Okay, That's in the center of the range between negative 1 and positive 1. When r equals 0, what that means is there is no linear relationship. And what that means is there's no line that I can pull. So when r is equal to 0, that would be a data set that looks like this, right? There's no linear, there's no line anywhere. This doesn't even look like a line at all. Like it's totally random data. It's like noise. So if you have a correlation coefficient of 0, it means they're not correlated. There's no relationship between this variable and this one because if I march this way, it's totally random. It doesn't march in a linear fashion either direction, right? So that's what happens when you have an r of 0. Now, you can also go to the right over here, let's say, you can also have at the extreme on the right hand side, you can have a correlation coefficient all the way up to positive 1. Remember, it goes between negative 1 and positive 1. So if you had a correlation coefficient of positive 1, then what this means is it's perfect linear relationship. Now, what do I mean by perfect? It's perfectly correlated. That means, let me show you exactly what that means by drawing a picture. That means that if I were to plot those things and draw a line like this, then all of the data points would actually fall exactly on the line. 
see on some of those other examples, the data points were above and below the line, but if r is actually equal to 1, that means they're perfectly correlated. So algebraically, these, these dots actually fall exactly on a line. That only happens if the correlation co coefficient is exactly um, positive 1. Notice also, this is a positive line, right? So let me go ahead and write that down here. This is a positive slope. So when the correlation coefficient is positive anywhere over here, you're going to have a positive relationship in the slope of the line. If you get all the way to positive 1, these points fall exactly on the line with a positive slope. Now, you can probably guess what's going to happen if r is equal to exactly negative 1. Okay? If r is exactly equal to negative 1, let's go this direction and write, you have a perfect linear relationship. However, it's negative slope. Again, I have not showed you how to calculate r, but I'm just telling you what it means. So again, I'm writing some of the same things over again um, from what we've done before. But basically, if you were to plot those points and draw a line through them, what you would find if r was actually equal to negative 1 is that every one of these points, all of them, 100% of them, actually fell right on top of the line. There's no dispersion. None of these points are off the line at all. They're exactly on the line. So you see, that's why it's called a correlation coefficient. It's a measure of how, how or the degree of relationship between these two variables. And if you go to the middle, when there's no uh, relationship between them, a correlation coefficient of zero means it's totally random data. There's no line you can draw through them. If you go to one extreme and uh, to the positive r's, it means the line sh slopes up this way. And when you go all the way to positive one, the maximum correlation you can have, the dots fall right on top of a line. Perfect correlation. If you go all the way negative one, then the dots fall right on the line in the negative slope direction, in the negative correlation. Now, let me ask you, what's going to happen? Let me shift the paper up just to give us a little bit of room. This is at this negative extreme. This is at this positive extreme. What do you think is going to happen if you have a correlation coefficient between zero and one? Let's say 0.5. Anywhere in there, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, something like this. What do you think is going to happen? Well, I think you probably can guess because I've kind of beat it in, but basically because r is positive in this region, you're going to have a line that slopes uh, up. So if you were to draw a line that was a best fit of that data, it would slope up, right? But those points would not all fall on the line. You'd have some point, maybe some points would be on the line, but some points would be, you know, above and below. Again, some can fall on the line, of course they could, but you're going to have something like this. So as you march with a correlation con coefficient higher and higher and higher, what's happening is these points get closer and closer and closer to falling on the line when eventually you get all the way to a correlation coefficient of 1, they all fall on the line. Perfect correlation. And exactly the same thing happens over here. If you had something in that range, then you would have a negative slope line, okay, which would be down like this, and then some of these points would be on above and below the line. Of course, some of them could be on the line. That's fine too. Something like this. And as you march farther and farther negative, these points get closer and closer and closer to the line with more and more correlation until finally you get to the maximum negative correlation you can have when all of the points exactly fall on top of a line. That is, in a nutshell, what the correlation coefficient is telling you. And I spent so much time on this because it's actually more important to know what it's telling you than it is to know how to calculate it. Because the calculation for it, I'll show you in the next section, is a little bit messy. It's not hard. It's just ugly looking. So I really want to focus on interpreting the answer so that when you go to Microsoft Excel or go to your calculator, you get a correlation coefficient of 0.7, you know what it means. And you understand all the different cases that it could possibly be. That's why I'm spending so much time on this. So make sure you understand this. And then uh, follow me on to the next section. We're finally going to introduce what the correlation equation is, what the formula is to calculate it. And then once you get the number out of it, you'll understand um, how to interpret it, which is all we've spent in this section here. So follow me on to the next section, and we'll conquer that right now. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.